Good morning and welcome to everyone today. We welcome you to the celebration of the passage of Larry Yaros through death to new life. We celebrate the memory of a Christian man who lived and loved, laughed and cried, whose presence here on earth was important to us. Larry was one others could love, not always easily, but we loved him anyway and whose loss we all must mourn today. He is our brother, and we must console one another with faith in the belief that there is no death except that of baptism. Life is not taken away. It is merely changed. And so we break open the word of God for light and wisdom in the spirit of strength and unity. We invite you now to stand and please turn toward the main entry of the church as we begin. And so, dear friends, we begin in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In the waters, baptism, Larry died with Christ. God covered him with his mercy and welcomed him to his kingdom of glory. In baptism, Larry was given a garment as a symbol of his dignity, and his parents clothed him every day as a symbol of love. We now place the funeral pall of, as a reminder of that dignity. Larry was devoted to others and loved others and carried them and brought them closer to God. We carry him now one last time into this sacred celebration. Please join us as we sing. You shall cross the barren desert, desert but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wonder far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you who weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if we
So dear family of Larry and friends who have come to join us and parishioners here, um, we gather in God's name with hope and with an opportunity, um, with language and a way of praying that the church gives to us so that as the body of Christ, we might be strengthened um, in our faith. And so I invite you to to ease into this celebration and to draw close to these mysteries of life and of death and to not be afraid, as Jesus tells us. As we begin our celebration, let us pray. O God, whose nature is to always forgive and show mercy, we humbly implore for your servant Larry, whom you have called, to journey now to you. Since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in your everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with the holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O God, be what Spirit. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. None of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. For we all all shall stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Which of you, by worrying, can add a moment to his lifespan? If the smallest things are beyond your power, why be anxious about the rest? Or take the lilies of the field. They do not spin, they do not weave. But I tell you, Solomon in all of his splendor was not arrayed like any of them. If God clothes in splendor the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the fire tomorrow, how much more will he provide for you, O weak of faith? It is not for you to be in search for what you are to eat or drink. Stop worrying. The unbelievers of this world are always running after these things. Your father knows what you, that you need these things. Seek instead his kingship over you, and the rest will follow in turn. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, I uh, welcome you once again and those who are joining us on live stream. My name is Father Joe, and I'm delighted to be assisted by, uh, by Deacon Bob this morning and by our musicians, Karen and Mary. Um, and all of you are coming together. Um, it's not just a, a powerful symbol of God's presence in our lives, uh, but it's also a gift um, at, at this moment. It has been a bit difficult to gather in this past year, a fact that Mary told me was sort of weighed on, uh, on, on Dad's shoulders, as it has on a, a lot of us. Things feel very different um, in this time. Uh, and, and yet with um, his many years and many experiences, we know uh, as well that, um, that, that Larry saw all the turns of, uh, of life. We know as well that his faith compelled him forward, just as, as our faith should compel us forward as well. Uh, at a moment that um, there is there's sadness in our gathering and there's trembling at these mysteries of life, um, but God invites us to this movement from, from sorrow to, to true joy, right? from, from sadness to, uh, to a stable foundation um, of trust. Or scriptures, um, the, the general movement of scripture goes from sorrow to rejoicing or sorrow, lament to praise. Even in the choice of these readings, um, we simply used um, the readings for, for your mom's funeral, which was about uh, almost eight years ago. And um, except for the first one, I noticed the first one was... Uh, from Lamentation, and really had this, this the, the book of Lamentations has this heaviness about it. God, life is not supposed to be this way. Why has the, how, why has bitterness and suffering and hurt, it, it has consumed me. It's a real heaviness to that letter, but, but it always, it always, always shifts towards, um, towards faith at the end. But blessed be God, blessed be, blessed be my Redeemer. I know um, that uh, uh, that your mom suffered, um, and um, and there was there was sadness, uh, there was great sadness in her funeral, and hopefully, um, in this moment and of sadness, we can also be filled with hope, and we can we can take that step forward. That just as your mom has been united with our God in heaven, um, that that our faith tells us too that Larry is with 
um, is with God in heaven. He was a man of, of deep conviction. Um, Mary said in a word, he, he was hard-headed. <laughs> he was hard-headed. Was it all of his years in the army? Was it raising a, a family? Um, Mark and the three girls. Um, Mary told me, well, Anna's the smart one. And Patty, she's just an angel. And I said, well, what about you? Look at your picture. You look so sweet in this. As a little girl in her kitchen, the picture, she goes, oh, no, Father, I was very rebellious. I was, <laughs> I was, I was quite a pill. Right? Raising children, it shapes, it shapes parents as well, even as someone as tough and hard-headed um, as, as Larry. Mary said that he eventually needed hearing aids, and he got them, and he refused to wear them. <laughs> he just would not wear them. But at least she said she could sing louder, and it didn't bother him. He loved to sing. He sang for many years um, at the... Uh, the Fort Lee, at the chapel at Fort Lee, with the choir there, and for some time here at the Sacred Heart. He loved his faith. He loved his church. He gave generously, gave of himself. Um, Larry served for 21 years in the Army. Mary said she didn't even realize that it was, it was that long. It was sort of a, an eye-opener. and makes you wonder how many things that we don't realize about one another, how many things you still don't realize, all of the, the beautiful things that uh, your dad or your grandpa, your great-grandpa did during his lifetime. Uh, there was a little note on the, uh, on the tribute page on the obituaries that said, from, from a hairdresser, oh, he always looked in on me and he gave me a hug and made sure that I was doing okay and I, and I locked the door and I was, I was safe. You know, people that he cared for, he looked out for. Um, he served two terms in Vietnam. He won a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star. And I've always, I've always felt there's a strong comparison between sort of the military language and the military experience. My dad also, my dad being 20 years in the Air Force. But this scripture talks about gold and fire, about a refining furnace, about life is to us um, this, um, this furnace where gold is purified. Now, uh, from the face of it, that looks really unpleasant. Fire um, burns away everything that doesn't belong. That, that process, um, we know that fire is dangerous. Fire will burn us. It is too hot, it's too hot for us um, to touch. But for something like gold uh, that comes with so many impurities, the only way to get it pure is, 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 is to burn away everything that's there. So we hear this language uh, once again. The souls of the just are in the hands of God, and though they were suffering, though they were afflicted, though they were thought to be lost um, in the eyes of the world, no, they are at peace. Why? Because they're in God's hands. Why? Because their affliction, we always want to think that that, that suffering and affliction is just so unfair, it's just so, it's, it's so terrible, so wrong. But we don't know what God is doing with that in our hearts if we let him. And the way that life's challenges can open up to something new. Now, in all of those years in the military, again, I'm sure that, uh, that was, uh, it, it shaped Larry to be, um, to be much the man that he was. But not only that, right? God doesn't see us in one part of our life. Hopefully, all of that spills over to his family life, and his family life spills over to his, his work life, and life of friends and, and relationships. The, the, image of, um, the image of virtue is very much the same, that virtue is, is sort of the testing ground where we prove our, we prove our goodness, we prove our moral strength, um, but it, um, but it takes practice, and it's about all of our life. It's not just about having one skill. So the virtues, you know, virtue of courage. It's possible that somebody is naturally courageous, but courage is proved when there is fear, right? And patience is proved when, when life is difficult and complicated, and we simply have to wait for the good things to come. There's a, there's a place for us looking from God's perspective to say, God, thank you, God, for all of the virtue that, that Larry had, that he practiced, that he, he proved as gold tested in fire, and that it, it carried him through 
difficult situations, dangerous situations, right? Being at war, I, I can't even imagine. Uh, tricky situations, just family life, right? And, and children expressing, their, their, expressing their, their outlook and their personality, even from a young age. I heard recently a man described that he was trying to teach his five-year-old daughter how to cross the street. Honey, you look right, you look left, you look right again, and then you cross. And she was so annoyed, she did not want to learn that lesson. And he said she was annoyed the rest of the day. <laughs> Why is somebody teaching me? Why is somebody telling me? And so family life, it forms us as well. And I know uh, some, of the, some of the grandchildren are here. Are any of the great-grandchildren here as well? Do we have some, we have some greats? All right, man. That's right. Be proud of that. That's awesome. We got some hands going up. <laughs> Are you guys great grandchildren as well, too? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> so beautiful. Every and every generation it just uh, opens as a as a blessing and as an as a perspective, right? You be, you see life through your children's eyes. You suffer through your children's eyes. You you love through your your your, your children's experience, and then to see grandchildren and great grandchildren. This is the cycles of this. Um, is, is part of the way that we, that we learn, not just from our own experience. You know, the scripture, and we hear from St. Paul, this great confidence. No one lives for himself and, and dies for himself. Well, it's possible, but it's sad when that's the case. We, we have such a limited experience, just my tiny experience. But if you're open, if you let it, then other people's experience and the family life and God's family life, even to... Um, even to the strangers that we pass each and every day, they become part of, of, of God shaping us and God blessing us and God working through us. Um, on, the, uh, on the tribute wall, um, Rebecca wrote, Uncle Junior took care of me and my family when we moved to Prince George in the early 70s. So my husband and I salute a good moral and loving man. There's a lot of uh, a lot of, of thoughts and condolences there on the wall, and also Uncle Junior. Is it was that a I, you didn't say that name? Was that title? <laughs> is one of his one of his nicknames, <laughs> Uncle Junior? Many people uh, use that that language, and we know one another by our by our names, right, and by our attributes, good, moral. That loving and convicted, Mary said he would he would do anything for you. This um, this gospel reading have no anxiety at all. You know, even the birds uh, look at the birds uh, in the air and the flowers in the tree, the flowers in the fields. They don't. There's no there's no care there. There's a, there's a beauty about them, and I know that this this scripture was picked um, uh, for your mom. It's the gospel picked for your mom, and I saw that. I said. It's not usually the gospel that we pick for, uh, for a man, a tough military man, you know. But then I thought, but Mary told me, she, and something else she discovered, he loved clothing. He loved suits. He, he absolutely, she had no idea. She's like, do you know anybody who needs this uh, entire wardrobe of suits now? Um, there is, uh, uh, it's, right, it becomes part of our, uh, part of our character, part of the way that we present our, Sells to the world, um, and it's clothing. In Scripture, there's this comparison. St. Paul says, you put on, put on your virtue, put on your love, put on the breastplate of salvation. He talks about clothing as a way of thinking about the way that we walk through life, and God loves that. Um, God loves that, and, but all, and always pushes us just one step beyond. Okay, you've put on your best clothing. You've, you've dressed yourself up. Now give the world your best. Right? Give the world your true smile. Give the world your strength. Give the world your, your sacrifice and your presence. And Jesus says, and put away anxious thoughts. Thoughts. I read, um, it was a little, uh, it was a, a scientific study. Somebody was trying to measure human thought. And they, their, their best estimate was that, a, we, that the average human has about 60,000 thoughts every day. 60,000. And that uh, 90% of them are the exact same thoughts that we had yesterday. <laughs> we, right? we have great capacity to think the same things and a small capacity to think new things. 
anxiety creeps in and distracts us and, and presses in our, on our thoughts and cry. We know that. It creates these cycles in there. Larry was devoted to prayer, his, his daily devotions, that daily habit of calming our thoughts, putting our thoughts before God. God, be pleased with my thoughts. Take away those, purify me of the thoughts that don't help me, that hurt me. Um, strength, fill me with the thoughts that, that, that send me out to love and to care for others. A, an awareness of thought. There's no other creature in existence that has an awareness of our own thinking. And to realize, my thoughts are dangerous right now. Or to realize, wow, my thoughts are creative. My thoughts are exciting. My thoughts are, are going to press me forward in, into something new. Thoughts are, they're important. We need to treat them with, uh, with love and respect um, and, um, and purify them as well. Um, as much as our personal journey, but also, dear friends, as we gather at this funeral celebration um, and the, the, the challenge and the invitation of Scripture is one uh, from sadness to life, is one um, not from life to death, not from life to our end. God is constantly revealing himself as, I am God of the living. And in fact, Jesus takes us from death to life. And what happened to him, his resurrection, his oneness again as body and soul is precisely our faith. Why? We, we've proved it naturally because Jesus has revealed this to us. Now there are signs, there are, there are hints, so many people get um, uh, encouragements from God and signs that their loved ones are still there. And for us to ask for their prayers and, uh, and, to, and to talk to them and to trust that, that God opens that channel of communication, it is good. It's an expression that where our loved ones have gone, God wants us there as well. But we have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our thoughts. We have to guard um, our, our memories. Nancy wrote on the tribute wall, I'm so sorry to hear about the passing of Uncle Junior. It's been many years since I had seen him. Sending my prayers and love to you all and praying our Lord blesses you with his comfort and many sweet memories of Junior. Sweet memories. That's what God wants for us. In fact, um, every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper, Eucharist, it is an expression of memory. Do this in remembrance. The core of our faith, the core of our following of Jesus, there is an activity of, of thanksgiving and an activity of, of remembrance. It's very, very powerful. And you all have so many um, sweet memories. You do, and you need to share those memories. We can't say that enough. And to tell the stories and to listen with, uh, with enthusiasm and to hear from, from grandchildren and from great-grandchildren as well and from friends in the community. I know uh, uh, Luis is here from Luca and uh, with his family. And I know that, uh, that this is part of his the memory of... Larry's life, right, is the places that he shared with, the friends that he shared with, um, the, the community that he shared with. Mary said she, there's a favorite memory, <laughs> favorite memory of, of Dad. Uh, one time on a road trip to Pennsylvania, he was wearing shorts and suspenders. And they went to a Burger King, and he got the little Burger King crown, and he put that crown on, and he wore it all day. And it just stands out in her mind as a, as a memory, right? Hold on to your memories and let God purify them and beautify them and let them sink down deep inside of you, become a source of faith and a source of love. Dear friends, please stand. Turn to God with our prayers now. I invite you to respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. God, strengthen us as we pray. For Larry, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, 
that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Larry, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in the medical and caring professions, doctors, nurses, home health care providers, especially those who care for Larry in his last days, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve our country in the military, the guard will guard, that God will guard them and protect them and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have fallen asleep in hope of rising again, especially Pat Yaros, Lawrence and Edna Yaros, and all the deceased brothers and sisters of the Yaros family, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. And so, dear Lord, we turn to you in our prayer. We ask you to strengthen us in faith, hope, and love, and all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
So pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Larry, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our merciful Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of life to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Lawrence, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your Son in a death like his may be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the saints, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus is commanded formed by his teaching. We dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. This time, Catholics come forward to receive a communion. Um, I'd ask you to um, keep your mask on, uh, receive in the hand, and then step to the side a few feet. There are uh, markings on the floor, and then to consume the Eucharist just to the side uh, and to um, um, keep your distance. Um, if you're unable to receive a communion with us, uh, you can cross your hands over your heart to receive a blessing or remain in your place, join with us in prayer. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
my Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I'm unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant, Larry, who has journeyed from this world, cleansed from all sin, received everlasting joys you promised to us in the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. It is a tradition in our parish that the, the surviving family enters the name of the deceased in our Book of the Dead. Dear friends, we come to the last moments of our um, celebration, uh, last moments of prayer, and then we will process to South Lawn Cemetery, invited to, to join us uh, to the place of final repose um, for, for Larry's spotty. Um, our celebration is very much filled with devotion and reverence. This is, uh, this is uh, an integral part of, of Larry's identity before God, and we reverence that in our Catholic tradition with all of the symbols and all of the, the, the love um, and the attention that we call with thanksgiving um, to the gifts of the body. You know, we're not just spirits uh, and we're not just physical. We are mysteriously and wonderfully made as mind and body and soul. And so we go to the final um, resting place after we complete our, our prayers. But before we go our separate ways, dear friends, first we must uh, express our farewell for our dear brother, that it might ease our sadness and strengthen our hope, because one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, 
destroys even death itself. And so in this final moment of prayer, I invite you first uh, to join me in a few moments of silence and to, um, to say a prayer and to ask God for something or tell God something you need to for yourself, for your family, for Larry, whatever's on your heart. Let us be in a moment of prayer. Paradisum deducante angeli in tu adventu sucipi ante martires et perducante in civitatem sancta Jerusalem corus angelorum Jesusipiat, et cum lasaro quantam paupere, eternam habeas reciem. Please stand. Please don't. 